School of Inspired Leadership. Hello. For three reasons. One, from what I have heard, he has been an extremely successful leader in a sector which is uh, very difficult, which is in the public sector which has a huge amount of national resources and for you to stay on the straight path and manage those resources and make an impact is very special. So that's the first reason why I am so joyful that he's here. Second, he is of course the father of Shiza. And uh, not only she deeply loved him, but she also is deeply inspired by him. And this is a very good combination. When your daughter not only loves you, but is inspired by you, then you feel that it is uh, fantastic. You know, then that means you must have done something really well to, to have brought up your uh, daughter like that. And of course, in celebrating Sheila, we celebrate her upbringing. And so to get the father of our student, who has outer achievement in the outer world, but also the inner achievement in the inner world, is something very special. And third, he is uh, a friend of soil because he chose to put trust in the school. Even though we are not the usual accepted brand, and we are a new experimental school. So the parents who trust their children to go on this path less traveled, they take risks with their kids. And therefore, as somebody who had faith in our vision, I just want to say thank you, sir. Uh, you did us an honor by sending your daughter to us. And I, on your behalf, I thank all the parents of all of you because they had a big role to play in your being here. And so I just want to say thank you. And 22nd January, we'll be celebrating Parents' Day. I hope uh, all of you will call parents to the school. And I hope um, if your parents are not here physically, I hope you can have them virtually if possible. And we would like to celebrate Parents' Day. And why 22nd January? Because that is the date of my father's birthday. Uh, my late father's birthday, so I want to observe that as Parents' Day. So I hope you will honor that. And I hope uh, Amasa will do us the honor of once again coming if he has the time. And if he is not doing all these advisory services for Deloitte Consulting that he now does, and also on the boards of several companies that he is very busy with. But if he does have the time, I hope he will come in. Thank you very much, Amasa. And over to you. Thanks for the nice words, both by your Mr. Anil Sadeva and your colleague here. I am not sure how interesting uh, my sharing of experience will be for you. You are all representing a virtual world. Many of you are from IT, and many and all of you are from the next generation which is more IT and less real economy. So I have my doubts whether my experiences will be of a lot of help to you or not. Nevertheless, I can't change my experience. You can't change your world. So I started my innings, as she has rightly mentioned, in railways. Indian railways are very proud and a huge organization, it's a world of its own, 37 years back. And 
34 years later, I changed my organization to head Hindustan Copper Limited. This is my brief introduction, which is relevant for knowing what I am going to share with you. I will start with Hindustan Copper Limited. I was in a totally unrelated sector in the railways. I am sure you can find, you can make out that there is nothing common between railways and mining sector. Because Hindustan Copper is a copper mining company. And railways you know, many of you have, if not all of you, in some interaction with the railways. So when I was chosen to head as CMD of Hindustan Copper Limited, more than me, a lot many people had apprehensions how this railway man is going to handle a mining company. True enough, I had no inkling, no idea of a mining, least of all underground copper mine, which are generally very deep. And I had no time. You see, CMDs, CEOs don't have time to learn and pick up that too at this ripe age of 57 or so. So I straight away had to take a plunge. When I analyzed the situation in Hindustan Copper Limited, I realized its production has been stagnating at around 3.2 million ton for several years. As a matter of fact, it had come down because the company had taken steps to close down certain mines. So that was my first challenge, what to do about it. Without any idea of copper mining, I started very intensive interaction with some of my technical people. My first challenge to them was that I want to increase the capacity of Hindustan Copper Limited at least by tenfold. Well, they did not laugh because I was CMD, but their body language was clear and loud that what I am talking is all nonsense. Anyway, after a lot of interaction, they, in their initial reaction was that, okay, we can increase the capacity maybe twice in the next seven to nine years. But after a lot of due diligence, we settled for four times. And I'm very happy to share with you that in a short stint of three years, less than three years in fact, three years and ten months to be precise, I could roll out as many as eight mining projects with an investment of about 4,000 crores. Now, you see, my job did not depend on these projects, nor did my emoluments, incentives, bonus, nothing dependent on this. It was sheer passion to do something, to achieve something, which led to this result. And as I left, most of these projects had been awarded at least to the successful EPC contractor, engineering, procurement and construction contractor. And six of them had started execution. For you, as youngsters, it may not mean a lot, but some of you who are familiar with the approval process, the decision making in private sector, in public sector, the government sector, it was a huge challenge. You, many of you must have heard about policy paralysis in governance and things of that sort. The government and the public sector decides things very differently than what it is done in a private sector. So this was one experience I wanted to share with you. The second one is about the business focus of Hindustan Copper Limited. When I joined there, Hindustan Copper people proudly used to say we are a vertically integrated company, we are present in all segments of the value chain, and we are the only 
primary producer of copper from mining to finished product. I found something amiss here. When I analyzed the situation, I realized that in our country, there were two private sector players in finished product. That means processing of copper concentrate, enriched copper ore, and producing refined copper. That means where the mining ends, their processing starts. That was their business model. They import concentrate because enough copper ore and concentrate are not produced within the country. And I realized that they were producing 5 lakhs and 4 lakhs. Vedanta was producing 4 lakhs in a plant at Tutikori and Birla 5 lakh at Dahej near Bombay. Compared to this, as far as finished copper was concerned, Hindustan copper share was hardly 50,000 tons. So you can imagine, in a country where 6 lakh tons was the total demand, and there were players producing 4 lakh and 5 lakh, I was not sure what Hindustan copper was doing with 50,000. The economies of scale, the operating cost, everything was unfavorable. And in the last few years, I realized the due to buoyancy in prices of copper, the value creator was mining. And 95% value was being captured at mining stage. And mind it, Hindustan copper is the only player, monopoly player in mining sector in, country, in this country. So I quickly changed the business model of the company from being vertically integrated to primarily a mining company. Our cash line was copper miner to the nation. This was the second material change in the business model of the company. And we closed one unit at Khetri. There was second unit at Ghatshila, close to Calcutta. If I had more time, I would have liked to shut down that also. But again, unlike private sector, which works only for profit, it's not an easy task at all in government and public sector to keep shutting unprofitable units. I had to face a lot of problems from recognized unions and many other stakeholders or non-stakeholders because their focus was totally different. To give you an inkling of what their focus was, for example, Khetri, they will say, no, you open the unit. My question was, why should I open it when I, get the, when I can get the job, same job done at a lower price through private sector? No, 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 we are public sector and so many people will be unemployed. As I said, I'm not throwing out anybody. What is your problem? No, 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 job creation. I said, I am quadrupling the capacity of the mines four times. So job will get created. When I, re when I talked to the insiders, the real focus of these people was that if the unit is running, they are able to pill for copper. By product of copper is gold and silver. They were able to pill for gold and silver. In a small place such as Khetri, there were a dozen of refining units for gold and copper. People could take out gold and silver in the form of slime, what is called slime. It's not pure copper, it needs to be refined. So the point I'm making is that uh, in public sector, things are a lot more challenging. And what is said is not at all important. And what is not said is the real crux of the matter. A third issue which I would like to share with you, again from Hindustan Copper Limited, is a very innovative marketing policy. Some of you will be from marketing, but 
uh, you may not find anything common because government sector operates very differently. Selling of refined copper, again, our competitors were Vedanta, that means uh, Sterlite, and Birla, that means Hindalco. Since they are in private sector, they are able to sell their produce by giving customer specific discount related to volume that he will lift. In a government sector, it is not at all possible to do that. People will raise fingers and more than that, there will be vigilance case. Somebody will doubt your integrity. So it's very difficult to give customer specific discount. If you give general discount, then your earnings will erode. So after a lot of deliberation, we came out with an innovative marketing policy where we gave the option to the customers in a very transparent manner. Firstly, it's a very long story. I won't take a lot of your time. Firstly, buying of copper from Hindustan Copper was made very easy. The website earlier did not have any section from where you could find out how to buy copper from Hindustan Copper Limited. And for a normal customer, it was a black box. He didn't know how to buy copper from Hindustan Copper. It's a huge company. I realized that considering the share in the finished product, Hindustan Copper should only tackle smaller customers. You can imagine, uh, out of total demand of 6 lakhs, if Hindustan Copper share after shutting down one unit is 31,000, then you don't have to target bigger customers. So our target was smaller customers. We put it on the website how to buy copper. We made totally transparent uh, marketing policy and gave various multiple options that you can buy on the basis of online price of copper, which is regulated through London Metal Exchange. You can buy on the basis of weekly average. You can buy on the basis of fortnightly average. You can buy on the basis of monthly average. Now here, initially, the marketing team, every one of us, including me, had apprehensions that it will work to the disadvantage of the company. The, but the customer psyche is such that it worked to our advantage. I'll explain to you how. Suppose for the first week of a month, the copper price, average price is 100. And on the seventh day, market price is 105. The customer will happily buy, thinking that he is getting cheap. The truth is, every single day of that week, he had an option to buy it at a lower price. That is how the average is 100. But he did not buy because he was fearing that it may go up. So on the seventh day when he arrived that the market price is 105 and the average is 100, he bought it. There were many situations where after buying the next day, it was 99. But we were able to sell. Of course, it will work the other way also. But considering our volume, we were able to sell our production at a better margin. This is the third thing I wanted to share. Now, enough of Hindustan copper, let me come to my first love, which was Indian Railways. Because uh, I became CEO much later, in my younger days, I was in the field, and many of you may feel, as a common person who has interacted with the railways, that railway is running trains. But railway is a complete world. It does a lot many things and it doesn't run just trains. To give an example, it manufactures locomotives, coaches. It uh, 
has container corporation it has uh, it has uh, almost every we have transfer of technology then public private partnership whole lot of things and it maintains locomotives coaches wagons rolling stock so i am now giving you examples of my younger days when i was not ceo but say it was virtually ceo i was in charge of workshops and divisions in my earlier days so i was working in bikaner division as a very young officer and my reputation as a no nonsense man got established there when i reached lucknow i was in lucknow division of indian railway northern railway at that time so initially i it was a very big trouble spot of unions organized trade unions they had made the life of management absolutely miserable lot of harassment to all levels of management the divisional railway manager uh, people will get crash into his room misbehave with him insult him all sorts of things union had inter was interfering in almost every walk of management every stage of management so from a very ruthless administrator i changed my tactics completely i this drivers who run the trains are a very volatile and militant category of staff when i analyze i found there was a lot of indiscipline and uh, huge number of charge sheets for various acts of indiscipline omission commission had been issued there were at least 3 to 4 clerks dealing with their punishments huge file i called all of them and they brought some 200 cases of punishment now what was happening at each stage of punishment there was corruption and union interference i'll explain to you how and why if the divisional in charge that means senior dme i was their senior dme gives an order firstly you ask for a report of misconduct or wrong doing that report comes you make an order that such and such person should be issued charge sheet then that order goes to the clerk who prepares charge sheet then that charge sheet has to be signed by the competent authority it has to be served on the employee acknowledgement has to be taken then he has to submit his reply in case of major penalty charge sheet a defense has to be appointed all these stages were there and union and clerical staff were making money at each stage when i say union actually it also amounted virtually to the same thing corruption because they were hand in glove and they were making money so at each and every stage there was money involved for its non execution for example the report has come and you gave an order issue charge sheet to mr x now you have 5000 6000 employees you will not remember or you keep on you can't keep on chasing that such and such person has to be issued charge sheet so people will sit over it if you remember or develop some mechanism to chase it then yes charge sheet will be put up it will be signed also after that it may not be served now it has been served acknowledgement you may not get without acknowledgement you have no confirmation whether it was served or not so to cut a long story short i analyze that at each stage there was corruption and harassment to the employee and at the end of it many times the punishment was either not commensurate with the offense or she was simply let off so i said you just keep all the files 
and I will call all the people who are involved in these acts of misconduct. I did not read, just got a summary made. I did not read the full case. Called each one of them. I shouted at them that, look, you have done this misconduct and your file is in my Almira. If you repeat, I know only one punishment and that is sacking. So, this time I am warning you, next time if you repeat, I will sack you. After doing this, he was issued a recorded warning. That was the end of all those stages which I described before you. And sure enough, the running staff who were let off and saved all the harassment of five, six stages, they became my great admirers. After that, it was so easy to regulate the discipline and get anything done. There is a system of control in the railway. Suppose somebody is misbehaving. My instruction was you tell the fellow to do it and then by the next train you come and represent to senior DME why you were not doing it. Now the, the brand value was such that after that they will not say no because there was an outlet for them and they were able to tell the real story. Because many times the individual in charge was not told the truth behind their conduct and he was ruthless in unnecessarily punishing him. And there was a marked improvement in the situation there and things improved. I will give us one more example, something similar before I close the division. Again, a sort of indication of union's interference in day-to-day -day governance and administration. Many times what was happening, I hope you can listen to me. Many times what was happening, uh, Lucknow division had three major places. Lucknow, Faizabad, Pratapgarh and one more, Banaras. Four, not three. One of them had been shut down. So what was happening, the maintenance staff, you promote him from one level to another level and transfer him. Now anybody who is in Lucknow, sending him to Pratapgarh or Faizabad or Banaras was a huge inconvenience and nobody was happy about it. And the, inverse, the converse was also true. If somebody is settled in Banaras, he would not like to come to Lucknow. So what the unions were doing and the people at the grassroots level, they were manipulating the entire process. Now suppose a panel is made for promotion and number one person, X, is from Lucknow and the vacancy is in Banaras. So a very simple proposal will be put up, the one vacancy is in Banaras, he is number one, he may be promoted and sent to Banaras. What, is, what was not put up is that one month later, there will be a vacancy in Lucknow itself, but that vacancy will go to perhaps number five. So what was done was, I said sorry, I took a special approval from the divisional railway manager that in future, Nobody will be transferred, except in exceptional cases where the work suffers. So I said that I will A, B and C, the total number of people will not change. That is frozen. But the grade will be dynamic. That was my discussion. So whosoever became due promotion, he was promoted there itself. Now some skill, if it became deficient, then by exception one or two people were transferred, but that was very rare. 
Now you will expect that the staff will be very happy. Of course, the staff was very happy, but the unions were up in arms. Why? Because their dukandari was shut down, and a situation came where now punishment is over, promotion is out. They were not getting enough money to take a cup of tea. Somebody came and confided to me later on. कि आपने तो हमारी दुकान बंद कर दी है। So this is what all these things I am sharing with you. This is what innovation, passion can do to management situations. If I had taken a very routine approach, none of it, which I have pointed out, would have happened. i will give you the last example of a workshop situation where i will not talk of people issues now i'll talk of performance issues i told you that uh, railways does a lot many things than running the railways so char bag workshop in lucknow area i was the deputy chief mechanical engineer they were overhauling diesel locomotives it used to take lot of time in completing the overhaul process it was taking as many as much as 3 months it was a huge loss to the nation and the railways because it was not available for running trains i analyzed the situation quickly and uh, the concept was not new its execution and implementation was very very difficult if you try to take out the assemblies from one locomotive repair them and put it back it is going to cost you lot of time but if some if through some process you can create a situation where a ready made assembly is available and you can simply remove one and replace it then your overhaul time will considerably reduced now the concept is very simple and it's not at all complicated everybody knows it the challenge was in its execution it was executed and to cut a long story short the improvement was mind boggling from 3 months it was brought down to 11 days and everybody was just waiting for the locomotive to arrive and all categories of employees will pounce upon it quickly remove it and put the overhaul one which was already in place and it reduces it reduces the cycle time enormously and uh, so these are some of the experience i thought i will share with you and since this series is on leadership i would like to sum up what leadership qualities should be there in a ceo my perception of course some of it you would have noticed i rate passion very important for the success of a ceo as a matter of fact if you do not have passion you will do as in a government situation you see the difference between government public sector and a private sector is in private sector everybody is passionate the reason is profit motive is the driver for his passion in a government sector in a public sector that is not the driver because irrespective of the performance you will earn your livelihood but if you are driven by passion then all this talk of policy paralysis and people not taking decisions and they will vanish so first quality in a ceo in my opinion should be passion if you are passionate about your work 24 hours a day 7 days a week 365 days a year 
you will only think about that company, about your job and ways to grow it, to improve it, to expand it. The second quality to my mind is vision. You should have the vision as to where this company will be five years from hence. If you do not have that vision, you will keep on doing things, routine things, operational things in a mundane, in a routine manner and it will not take the company anywhere. There are large, larger issues and all this you can flows from my example given. If I had not thought of Hindustan Copper's future, there was no provocation for me to expand its capacity which would have taken, it will take place much after I have left the company because the project execution takes five years and my total tenure was three years. But it was put in place so that nobody is able to derail and it is in autopilot mode where it gets executed and the company is the beneficiary. So that is the vision. What should be the people policy, things of that sort, that's all vision that five years from hence, what type of skills will be required, what type of recruitment profile will be there, all that comes part of the vision. The third quality to my mind is an innovative mindset. Your ability to try out new things, new business solutions and your risk taking ability is the third I will put. Fourth quality is people skills. Now there is a whole range of people skills. The leadership qualities you should be able to lead by example. Your employees, people working under you should draw inspiration from you. And if you yourself work for 10 minutes a day and keep on giving lectures to your employees that no, 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 working hard is a very good thing, you should work for 10 hours a day, I am sure it doesn't require a lot of intelligence to find out that these things will not cut any ice with anybody. And people know what you are. As a CEO, you are continuously being watched. Even a small action on your part is monitored. So do not think that anybody that you do or say is not known to people and you can get away with it. No. So you have to lead by example. You have to select your team in a manner that you get workers, not shirkers. And that is why I was just now sharing with your Anil Sajdev that I was very happy about this caliper test personality mapping of soil. That if only we could apply such filters <coughs> at recruitment stage, then 80% of the problem is over. If we recruit right set of people with good attitude, then we don't have to monitor them. If you recruit passionate people, they don't have to be told every day, look, you are not working. You will have to stop him. Look, you, do, you, you have to take care of your health also. You can't keep working 24 hours a day. That is what passion is. So all these people skills, communication, the CEO has to have. He has to motivate people. He has to be a clear communicator. He has to be with them when they need him the most. I will give an example of our ex-president Abul Kalam Aza. Some of you might have heard about it. A missile was to be launched and a press conference was called. After the launch of missile, the press con conference was to be addressed. It so happened that the missile failed. Secretary Department of Science went alone to address the press conference and took all the blame on himself. 
she said, our boys work very hard. It's just that something unforeseen happened. We'll analyze it. The blame is mine. Uh, we, and we are sure that after six months, well before six months, we'll be able to fix it. Second time, when the missile was launched, it was a hit, it was a success. And the secretary did not go for the press conference. He said the people who are responsible for the project, the project leader will go. This is what leadership is. Now, no amount of incentive, no amount of pay raise can win the confidence of your people if you take all the credit and they get all the blame. So, people is great. There are other things also like uh, time management, priorities. When I say time management, some of you might have read One Minute Manager. I have personally seen people, very good, very sincere, very hard working, but they do not have any sense of any priority about their, uh, they have no clue about their priorities. Out of 24 hours, a totally unimportant, insignificant thing, they will apply four hours, and the most important thing, they will apply in five minutes. A typical example is that you discuss the menu for a conference, and everybody will contribute, and you would have a two hour, three hour, four hour long session. And when it comes to some key performance parameter of the company, everybody is quiet, nobody has any clue, nobody has any ideas. When you discuss a problem, you spend hours analyzing the problem. Everybody is, oh, I also saw it, this problem is very bad. When it comes to solution, everybody is quiet. It should be the other way. You should know the problem only to the extent that it helps in finding a solution. Now, the real debate should be on the solution. What are the various pros and cons? And it is there, everybody should contribute and come to a workable solution. So, as CMD, I had told people, I do not want anybody to come here and nod. If you don't have to anything to contribute, you better stay outside. Everybody should contribute in finding a solution to the problem. So, that is why I say that you should, time is limited, it's a finite uh, consumable. Once time is lost, you can't get it back. It's a next day. So, you have to use it most judiciously. And those who put time to judicious good use, they are the winners. Those who can't do it, they may work 24 hours a day and still they will have tons of work at the back of their mind which they have not finished. These are some of the thoughts. I think it's now your turn. I do hope some of you found something interesting, but the field is open for any questions relating to what I have shared with you or even otherwise. Can I sit down here? All of you are sitting and me at this age. The question from Rainbow to Hindustan uh, definitely would have needed some time to build your uh, credibility among the employees because you were making big decisions. So, how long did you keep yourself for that and how did you build your credibility? You see, in a tenure of three years, at other levels you may require time to build a reputation and things of that sort. But not as CMD. You are supposed to start delivering from the word go. You see, to give you an example, I joined on 28th October 2009. And uh, I think it was 7th or 9th of 
November when ministry held its first meeting and I was ready, ready with macro detail of my mine expansion plan. So it was a quarterly performance review meeting uh, where you they discussed the performance. I did that and after the presentation, conventional presentation was over, I told the secretary, I said, look, she was a lady. Madam, you know what is the problem of Hindustan Copper Limited? She looked at me. I said, don't go at these variations. Something has gone up, something has gone down. This is a statistical variation. Our tendency is that if it goes up, you take credit. If it goes down, you give some explanation. I said, this is all, you take 10 years performance. It's all a statistical variation. The answer, short answer to your question is that your actions speak louder than your words. And if you deliver, the reputation travels very fast. No other questions? Either you found it very boring or you have, yeah, please. Let me share with you that the perception of corruption is not as severe as people project it to be. For example, I had a few occasions where some pressures came to me but I never succumbed and 34 years is not a small period or for that matter that there is a continuation, 37 years I can say with total transparency and confidence that nobody could ever pressurize me into doing things. You see I had my map, I had my Lakshman Rekha. Lakshman Rekha in the sense that a small favor, if you can oblige politicians, the minister, without crossing that Lakshman Rekha, I did not mind, a small favor. But invariably, I will sound as CMD, I sounded the minister when, he, when a request came. I sounded through his personal secretary that, look, this is in gross violation of rule, such and such rule. In case I do it, it will cause acute embarrassment. You explain this to the minister. If he still wants, then I will see how it can be done. In nine cases out of ten, he will say, okay, don't do it. So. It is not as if everybody is corrupt. You see, there may be corrupt people. To give you an example, one particular minister in railways, he was very corrupt. But he never pressurized people working under him to write favorable noting. His modus operandi was very simple. After the tender case went to him, Whatever was the recommendation, his machinery set up will make money from the lowest bidder, which in any case has been recommended by the bureaucracy. Now, if he makes money, it is his problem. We are not social reformers. But we were not pressurized to change, to violate rules and change noting. So we were happy about it. And at a divisional level, you see, normal public comes in touch with people like traveling ticket examiner, ticket collector. Now, this is a petty corruption where the country's culture 
and unless there is a total transformation, attitudinal change <coughs> as a country, these petty corruptions will never go away. No amount of Lokpal or any such thing can remove this type of corruption where you have a scant respect for rules, regulation and procedures. You are in a hurry always and you want to palm off somebody to get your things done. This is a cultural issue in our country. We go to temples, mosques and dargahs to bribe God. We do the same in, with bureaucracy and try to get out of course favors from them. Yeah, please. So, whatever uh, perception we perception means, whatever we heard from him, he really made a big change uh, to the Indian railways. And a lot of case studies have been discussed about it. So, can I just uh, hear from you? You are right. I was in railway board. As a matter of fact, I was associated with some of the most politically inspired projects at that time. Let me share with you. The biggest thing that Lalu Yadav as minister did was he brought a very competent officer on a special duty and left everything to him. He did not meddle with what he did. As a matter of fact, he gave full support to him. Now, Lalu Yadav personally did not know head or tail of railways. He understood only Jersey cow. He, uh, some five years of tenure, he gave two, three gems. Okay, Jersey cow, you have to, even Jersey cow, if you don't uh, milk it fully, it will go sick. So, railway should also be milked sufficiently, otherwise it will go sick. Beyond this, he didn't do anything. Everything else was done by railway people and the guidance and encouragement was given by his officer on special duty, Sudhir Kumar. I was in very close touch with all these people. So that's the story of uh, Lali Yadav. Yeah, please. Sir, I believe that uh, person official, uh, officer of duty was a Vyar Kettle IAS officer. Somebody, he was the guy behind this. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. That's what they said. Yeah. So, you see, it is, you can say that everything was done by him, but the truth is that who brought him in the first place and who gave him the full support? That makes all the difference. So, to that extent, the credit should go to him rightly. Now, Mamta Banerjee, when she came, that one person was replaced by half a dozen people and still none of them were sure of minister's support because minister himself, herself, was very erratic. So that's how it is. So, in the government setup, how do you face this? Uh... You see, in a government setup, the decisions rest with board of directors for a public sector undertaking. The decisions rest with board of directors. And if the investment is more than 500 crore, it goes all the way to cabinet committee on economic affairs. Now, the biggest hurdle in government sector is Nobody wants to take any responsibility because if you decide something, then you can be held accountable. If you do not decide, no harm can come to you. 
So this was the biggest hurdle I faced. So they will either not approve the proposal or create all sorts of obstacles that it is delayed and their tenure is over. They were calling me a mad person. What is wrong with you? Why do you want to do all this? These projects will materialize after you are, uh, your tenure is over. What benefit does it give to you? So it is more uh, because they have all the authority and no accountability, no responsibility. If the company doesn't do well, the discredit goes to the CMB. Nobody else. So that is the problem. I was to get one project approved from Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs. It was a 1500 crore investment. It took the ministry one year to send it to the Investment Promotion Board. One year. It's a, it's a, it's a case study how not to do things. <laughs> so, in anticipation of that approval, I had already floated the tender and even the tender was approved. So later on, questions were being asked, what was the hurry? And the union people who were unhappy with me for reasons I explained to you, they put motives, they will write from Prime Minister of India to the lowest rung of people that the CMD is in a hurry because he is retiring, he wants to make money. So we face all these hurdles and that is why, you see, the, the odds are in favor of not doing things and it requires a mad person to do something. Otherwise, for, for example, for me, I could have easily passed three years tenure without doing anything except running the profit and loss uh, this thing, of course. And none of these projects none of that uh, marketing policy or whatever I told you had any relationship with the immediate performance of the company. It would have still got the turnaround or whatever. So that is the type of hurdle you come across. No. Competent authority is only one. And there cannot be any backup plan. For example, investments have to be approved by the board. If they don't approve, they don't approve. Tender cases have to be approved by the board. The backup plan is that if they don't approve, which I used, I went to the secretary, who was their boss. I said, look, there are a lot of complaints about these projects, at least one of them. If you feel that there is some hanky-panky, you just give me a hint. For CMD, it doesn't cost anything to derail that project. But I must give credit to the secretary. He said, no, we are sitting in the ministry. Lot of people come. I am totally convinced and satisfied that you are absolutely above board. This is the last set of objections. Unfortunately, my team is not as bold as I am. You explain it and I assure you in the next board meeting, this project will be through. And it happened. So you can call it a standby plan because it was an informal authority by the secretary. But there is really no backup plan. See, let me be very honest with you. I was feeling very frustrated. Both I left railways 
out of frustration and join something which was not quite pub, uh, private but halfway. But being an insider for 37 years, I have no doubt that most of these things should be dismantled. Why should the government try to do everything when people at the helm of affairs have their feet of clay, they don't want to decide anything, then the best way is that you exit. So the developed countries, even China, everything is in private hands. China, without really changing their basic philosophy, they have followed the private culture. And we in our country, country had this socialist uh, mindset which is totally outdated now. No less a person than our Prime Minister said that mixed economy, mixed economy is a mixed up economy. So that is the fate of our country. We had lot of government to control, socialist mindset. Even today when I interact with the uh, parliamentarians, today means till I was CMD, parliamentarians, even bureaucrats, they think that the best way of doing a thing is public sector. Which is not the case. So when you were a rapper to Lanna and you said you have heard a rapper in the years of quite aggressive and violent or aggressive and violent, was there any security risk or or maybe life threatening type of or when as when you were taking certain decisions, they might not have been taking certain some of them. Yes. I can only say that fortune favors the brave. I, uh, let me tell you, since you have raised this issue, tell you that uh, recognized unions did not pose any recognition to your personal security. They will not kill you. But personal what they can do is, they can manhandle you. They can they assault you. That type of situation was very likely. But there was an union, uh, there was a fraud on Lucknow division where uh, fake pay sheet, pay, uh, pay roll, fake was being made and people were taking money on fictitious names. Now some of them, some of those names, suppose 500 people were getting paid, some 30, 40 people were there. So when the scandal came to light, all the people were thrown out. So one of them always used to move with a gun and he will enter anybody's room, including mine. But again, you see, if you do not give any cause for people to cause your personal integrity, you can get away by murder. And that is, that is the strategy I followed. That is the strategy I followed. Once he came to my room, he said, if you have come to threaten he said that request kar rahe hain hum to dhamki aise nahi dete hain kar rahe hain i shouted at him and threw him out of my room later on i was very new to the division Later on, people said, "Ki ya ab kya kar rahe hain? Ye aadmi to gun ke saath ghumta rehta hai. Iska koi barosa nahi kab attack kar de." But such situations are very rare. Lucknow was a very bad division of the railways. Now this type of situation is very uncommon. Those were the days when law and order and the trade union activities union irresponsible. No longer. Now the unions are much better. No longer. I think our time is up. I think our time. Uh, on behalf of Soil, sir, thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing your time with us. I think we are all inspired by the way you have handled your tough situations in your professional life, tough situations. You have been so beautifully, and thank you so much for being here with us.
Okay, thank you.